Hey guys, I'm Brandon Farmahini, and Valve has announced that in less than three months since they passed 65 million registered Steam users at the end of October, they registered another 10 million to put them at 75 million total users. That's 15% growth in three months. And we thought 30% growth from 2012 to 13 was impressive. Apparently not. This blows it out of the water. The increase in activity is likely due to a combination of two Steam sales and the CES reveal of their initial Steam machine setup. And they're not just empty account signups either. At the beginning of December, Valve announced that they had passed 7 million concurrent users, almost exactly a year after passing 6 million. By the end of the same month, they'd left that number in the dust and hit a record 7.6 million users all active on Steam at the same time. As part of the announcement, Valve has also revealed some information about their user purchase activity, like that North America accounts for 41% of sales, Western Europe is just behind at 40%, and Oceania and Russian territories are tied at third for 5% each. This information comes as Steam Dev Days, a two-day development conference in Seattle that gives developers access to panels, instruction, and hands-on time with Valve's products, wraps up. The event has also brought the news that Valve has decided to drop the touchscreen from their Steam controller, largely to help with backwards compatibility issues. Valve has also said that the touchscreen was too distracting, with users frequently looking away from the screen to navigate the touchpad. Arctic Digital developer Thomas Rawlings, who is attending the event, says that the touchpad, quote, was removed as ghost mode made it redundant, with ghost mode referring to an overlay in the on-screen user interface designed to display the touchpad options and activities. When Valve began their Steam Machine beta with 300 testers at the end of last year, they declared that their intentions to make changes based on feedback if necessary. In November, Valve's Greg Comer said, quote, if we find out that there's a necessary change that means a radical redesign of the controller, we're going to make that decision just the same way that we have with all our other products." End quote. The initial plan for the controller hosted four buttons at each corner of the touchscreen and three horizontal buttons below. The new arrangement will feature two sets of, of four buttons near the left and right trackpads. It's complicated. Next upcoming Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC game Titanfall is entering an alpha phase and developer Respawn has invited Xbox One gamers to be a part of helping to fine-tune it before its March release. To apply for the beta, you'll have to visit the Titanfall website application page linked in the description below, and sign in using your Origin account when prompted. Successful registrants will be contacted via email. In the hype up leading to the March launch, Respawn has also announced a limited edition Xbox One controller that according to Respawn lead artist Joel Emsley, quote, feels as if it is a piece of military spec hardware transported from the universe of Titanfall and into players' hands. Last week, the developer announced that Titanfall would be capped at 12 human players per match, and after backlash from the community, clarified that the presence of Titans and AI bots would put the total combat count at 48 per match. Square Enix is also finally sharing information on one of their next-gen games in development, Hitman. The game has been widely rumored for some time, though the recent announcement that Square Enix Montreal was no longer working on a Hitman title led to a brief scare that development had been cancelled entirely. Square Enix was quick to assure gamers that a new title was being worked on by IO Interactive, but until now they haven't been prepared to say more than that. Hmm. Today comes what I guess could be considered an official announcement, maybe, of the game, which doesn't yet have a final name for Xbox One, PS4, PC? <laughs> in 2012, IO Interactive was widely criticized for Hitman Absolution's treatment of the franchise Agent 47's Infinite Pockets and that latex nun trailer, and in an open letter to fans, the studio has assured gamers that this title will be more in line with the core franchise. They say, quote, We've adopted an open, non-linear level design approach to the game, ensuring the game will play out across huge checkpoint-free sandbox levels, end quote and go on to explain that, quote, the game concentrates on the core Hitman fantasy using a wide range of tools to take out a diverse group of targets across expansive exotic locations around the world, end quote. Finally, following up on a Rockstar's announcement that GTA Online would be taken down for maintenance, the game is back up and running and Rockstar has confirmed our suspicions from yesterday by announcing a serious crackdown on cheaters in the online game. You know who you are. They say, quote, those who actively engaged in cheating and exploiting the game in this manner will be subject to an in-game penalty at our discretion. 
This may include being placed in isolated cheater pools or banned from GTA Online altogether. They also encourage users to report those they see cheating in order to keep the community healthy and warn that they will be releasing some more updates as necessary. And that's today's news. Do you think that Valve's new changes to the Steam controller make it more or less appealing as a PC gaming input device? Shout out in the comments below and let us know what you think. Then check out roosterteeth.com to see if you agree with our 2013 Game of the Year picks on our gaming podcast, The Patch.